Hi, I'm Alicia Mikolaisik Kurtz, an emergency medicine doctor in Sacramento and one of the regional directors for the California Bridge Program. This video is meant to answer frequently asked questions for some of the community partners we have out there doing their best to try to help us elevate the care that we're bringing to patients with substance use disorder. Specifically, we're talking about MAT and buprenorphine, which is a way of treating people who have opioid use disorder. Opioids is the term that refers to the family of medications and drugs that all bind and act on the opioid receptor or the mu receptor in our brain, which is responsible for pain, but also reward and addictive behaviors. Opioids is the larger parent word for all of these medications and drugs, which includes the medicines we prescribe like Oxy or Norco or morphine, but it also includes more illicit opioids like heroin or fentanyl. Opiates is a term that refers to only some of these, so we prefer the term opioids because it's more inclusive. To really understand how MAT works, we have to differentiate two terms, dependence versus addiction. Dependence is what happens when, over time, your body's exposed to the same drug over and over, and so it adapts. It gets used to having that drug in your body and establishes a new normal. So much so that when you don't have that drug anymore, you actually go through withdrawal, which is usually not a very pleasant experience, but it's from not having that drug in your body, which is now necessary for you to feel normal. Opioids do this, but so do other medicines like benzodiazepines, Ativan, Xanax, and also alcohol. Unlike alcohol or benzodiazepine withdrawal, though, opioid withdrawal in and of itself is not deadly. It doesn't kill people. It is, however, horrible. It's absolutely miserable. It causes nausea and vomiting. It's super painful. Um, people become irritable. They just, it isn't very fun. And so a lot of times, one of the reasons that people have difficulty getting off of opioids is the fear of or inability to endure the terrible nature of opioid withdrawal. Compare that to addiction. Addiction refers to when your need for a substance is so severe that it's causing negative choices and behaviors, things like lying or stealing, spending money on drugs instead of paying your bills or your rent. This is very different because it's behavioral and choice-centered versus just physical dependence, needing opioids to feel normal, and if you don't have them, it would send you into withdrawal. This is important because of the term MAT. T, which I mentioned earlier, but it stands for medication assisted treatment or medication for addiction treatment. MAT acknowledges what science already knows to be true, which is that substance use disorder is a chronic disease. It's a medical diagnosis. Yes, it's the result of choices that some people have made, but that's true of a lot of medical problems. For example, if you don't eat well or take good care of your body, you can develop high blood pressure or cholesterol or diabetes. If you choose to smoke cigarettes, you could get lung cancer. But that doesn't mean that you're a bad person. And the same is true of people who choose to cope or experiment with drugs. And some of them end up with dependence or addiction that surrounds drugs like opioids. None of these choices are the marker of bad people, just unfortunate choices that lead to chronic disease. And as a medical disease, the good news is there are medications to help you. Just like we have medicines for high blood pressure or cholesterol or diabetes, we also have medications for substance use disorder. To talk about these medications that we use in MAT, it's important to realize that everything in your body works on receptors. That's how literally every single thing happens. Your emotions, your hormones, your um, medications that you take, everything works on receptors. And there are two ways that something can affect a receptor. An agonist is the name of something that turns a receptor on, that activates it. An antagonist is the name of something that turns a receptor off. It dumbs it down. Opioids work on the opioid or mu receptor in our brain. It turns them on, which makes you feel really good. This is the reward center. It's with a surge of dopamine that comes out after anything activates that receptor. It feels awesome. That's where that high comes from. But at the same time, activating our mu or our opioid receptor causes respiratory depression. It causes your breathing to slow down. It causes you to be really sleepy or somnolent, very, very altered and confused. 
And if you had too much of that mu receptor being agonized or turned on, it can actually cause you to stop breathing, which leads to overdose. An example of an antagonist is naloxone, commonly referred to by its most common brand name, Narcan. Narcan is a full aggressive antagonist. It turns off that mu receptor. So if you took a bunch of, say, heroin and you overdosed on heroin and it caused you to stop breathing, giving Narcan will kick that heroin off the mu receptor and turn it back off so that you wake up and basically come back to life. And this brings us to buprenorphine. Buprenorphine is a medication that we use in MAT for people who have opioid use disorder. It's a partial agonist, but also a partial antagonist. And it's a really strong binder of that opioid or mu receptor, which means that it will kick off fentanyl or heroin or anybody else that's floating around in your body right there because it's so strong of a binder to that receptor. And by being partial, it turns on the mu receptor enough that it decreases cravings for opioids. It helps people um, not go into withdrawals and be able to just feel normal if their body is physically dependent on opioids. But it only does it enough to get to normal and not enough to overdose. Compare that to methadone. Methadone is another medication that we use in MAT, um, but it's a full agonist, a long-acting full agonist. It only turns on that opioid receptor. So it still has the risk of overdose. It makes people sleepier. And when you're on methadone, just like when you're taking Norco or Oxy, you really shouldn't be driving a car or operating heavy machinery. So from a practical standpoint, buprenorphine is just easier to be on because it doesn't have those same restrictions. And this is reflected in the data. When we looked at methadone head-to-head with buprenorphine, people liked buprenorphine better, and they did better on buprenorphine. In fact, buprenorphine is one of the most effective medications that we have. When you compare buprenorphine to going cold turkey trying to quit opioids, 20 to 25% more people are able to be successful in their treatment. And that's because buprenorphine takes care of that dependence part. It gets rid of those cravings, and it makes people feel more normal. And that treatment leads to 20% fewer deaths from opioids, 20% fewer deaths. And to me, that is a really good return on our investment from a public health perspective. Most patients who are on buprenorphine are on some kind of a combination pill, buprenorphine plus naloxone or Narcan. And these common brand names are like Suboxone or Subutec. The reason that it has that Narcan in there is that when you're taking it the way that you're supposed to, only the buprenorphine kicks in. But if you were to, say, try to inject it or to misuse that to see if it could get you high, it wouldn't work because that's when the Narcan does kick in and would prevent you from being able to do that. This is really helpful because it makes buprenorphine something that people don't want to steal, but also something that you're not going to misuse and get the same effects. And actually, what we know from our patients is that a lot of times when people are buying bup on the street, they're actually buying it to try to stay sober, to try to not have to use heroin or fentanyl because they need something with that physical dependence to to stay feeling normal. When you take buprenorphine, Usually, it comes in a sublingual tablet or a buccal film. And the key to both of those is that you put it in your mouth and you have to let it dissolve completely. So nothing to eat or drink until it's all the way gone. If you were to, say, drink water with it and swallow some of it, it's not going to kick in and you're basically going to be underdosing yourself on accident. So it's really important that patients let it fully dissolve um, either in their cheek or underneath their tongue so that it reaches the right effect and they get their whole dose. A really commonly asked question that we get is, how long are people going to be on buprenorphine? Like, when can they come off of it? The answer to this is a little bit complex, but basically, do you ask patients with diabetes when they're going to be able to come off of their insulin or people who use albuterol for asthma, like when they're going to wean off of their albuterol? No, of course you don't, because it's a chronic disease and people need that medication to be able to be normal. They need insulin to have a normal blood sugar. They need uh, a blood pressure medication to keep their blood pressure right. They need albuterol to help them breathe. People with opioid use disorder whose bodies have become physically dependent on opioids need an opioid to feel normal. And so some people will be on buprenorphine for forever. And that is a marker of sobriety. It is a marker of controlling their chronic disease. It's not 
the same as saying that someone is still in that addiction, negative behavior um, kind of spiral. So it would be really untrue and unfair uh, to say to patients who are on buprenorphine, like, when are you going to come off of that or to question their sobriety? So instead, I would encourage you when you see patients who are on bup to celebrate that, um, to celebrate that sobriety and to honor what it really means, which is that they are controlling their chronic disease. Another question people ask us a lot is, what happens if somebody on buprenorphine relapses? And the answer is, then they relapse. It is normal. It's common. It happens all the time. Just like people who are on insulin for their diabetes still drink milkshakes and eat pizza. We're not perfect. Humans are not perfect. And our bodies crave what they crave. And a relapse or going back to the thing that your body really craves and, and depends on should not be seen as a marker of failure. It's a natural part of the process. And it is safe because remember that buprenorphine is stronger. So if somebody is taking bup and then they go to use heroin or Norco or Oxy, the buprenorphine will win. So it's, medically, it's actually totally safe and they're not usually going to overdose or have a severe issue with that. The bottom line here is that all of us need to learn to be more compassionate and understanding and less judgmental about patients having substance use disorders. There are plenty of really good people who just made poor choices and now have a physical dependency on drugs. There are celebrities and athletes and professionals that many people look up to who have substance use disorder or have died from opioid overdose. Our patients are not different than those people. They're not bad people. They're just people with a really frustrating and sometimes disappointing disease. Hopefully this answered some of the questions that you may have had about MAT or buprenorphine or substance use disorder in general. But if you're looking for more, head to the California Bridge Program website at bridgetotreatment.org. We've got lots of resources that go into much deeper dives on all these topics and a lot of other things related to substance use disorder as well. In the meantime, thank you for watching and for everything that you're doing to help improve the care for patients with substance use disorder.